Hey, what's up, Explainers? Super excited to have you on board today. And this video is actually going to be something special. Why? Because I'm going to show you my top five tips on how to write a better Bug Bunny report. So when you're handing in a submission, five tips to get your report triaged faster, which ultimately leads to having the money faster in your bank account. And you might be wondering right now when I'm wearing this beautiful hat over here, and this is because this video today is sponsored by Integrity. First of all, I really want to thank Integrity for helping me out with my channel, sponsoring this video because it's a huge amount of work that goes into it. But a little bit more on Integrity. Integrity is Europeans' number one bug bunny platform. And what that means is they're similar to Bug Crowd or Hack One, but mainly covering the European market, European companies. And that is actually really great for you. Let me tell you why. Integrity currently has around 15,000 security researchers working on their programs. That is a lot less than Buckcrowd or HackOne has, which means less competition for you. So I would definitely recommend you to sign up to Integrity right now. Check out the programs. There are ones like European Commission, there is Brussels Airlines, and I think most notable Red Bull, which you've probably heard of by now. So make sure to check out Integrity's Bug Bunny platform, sign up and register today, start hacking immediately, and get those Bug Bunny rewards faster in your bank account by using the five tips that I'm going to show you today. All right, here we go. And I want to start with tip number five, and that's a relatively easy one. Fill out all the information needed for report properly. And I want to start with an example that we're seeing right over here. So this is an imaginary submission that I'm making throughout this video, and it's on the Rat Bull program on Integrity. And if you look up here, we are seeing the title of the submission. And you want to give this something that is easy to understand. So if you found, let's say, a remote code execution, call it remote code execution. If you find a cross-site request forgery finding, call it cross-site request forgery. And then finish it up with where you found it. So just say remote code execution on example.com. And for the rest of it, I want to go a little deeper and show you my entire screen. All right. So now that we have filled out the title, we have to select the domain. And that should be easy. I mean, if you already know where you found it, I've used example domain.com over here, but let's say you found it on a subdomain of redbullmediahouse.com. You would select that. Easy as that. Then you go on and use the, or put down the endpoint vulnerable component once again. So this could be, now we'll actually get rid of this right now to make this example a little more legitimate. You could say I found this under HTTPS, uh, whatever, uh, bug bounty dot rat bull media house dot com. And it could be that you found this on a specific path, right? So put down the path where you found it. This could be, I don't know, index dot HTML. And as we have found a remote code execution, we want to specify that as well in the type. And it's super easy. You just go to the type selector and you say remote, and you already see remote code execution popping up. So let's select that. All right, moving on. Remember, fill out all the info properly. Next up is severity. So we do have the, I call it for now, the easy pick severity selector that goes from none to undecided. And we have the CVSS calculator. And I actually recommend to use that. I love it to actually put down a specific score and enable the triaging team and the company in the end to have a look at the score that you've calculated. So let's say this was accessible from the public network. You took quite some time to construct the pack and the exploit. Let's say hi. You might need a low privileged user to actually reach that the path where you can trigger the remote execution. You do not need anybody else to interact with it in order to, to work. And you might be just affecting the system that you're attacking. So this is unchanged. 
And then typically with remote code execution, you do have a lot of really juicy data that you can get. So confidentiality is usually high. You also able to change the data or change the entirety of the data. So you want to set this to high as well. And then maybe you can even take the system down and make this unavailable for everyone. So this would be high as well. And you're getting a submission score of 7.5, which is a high finding. Easy, right? You don't have to do anything else. The submission severity is calculated and you're good to go. And then moving forward, we are coming to the actual finding. But before we're going to put down anything under here, we're going to have a look at my place number four. So the next thing you want to do is you want to check the scope again. It just doesn't make sense to hand in a submission of finding a vulnerability, which is not in scope. That will only lead to the triaging team being not really happy with you. And also the company who's running the program won't be really happy with you and you will just use up time of all those people. So first of all, make sure to have read the entire scope before you start hacking. So that's actually the first thing you should do. But then once again, before you're handing something in, run a little quick check if your finding is in scope. So the important things here are the main. You want to make sure one more time that your finding is in the domains that are included and you also want to make sure to check out the out of scope section because with a couple of programs and you can see over here, it's the same with Red Bull. There is specific subdomains, for example, which are out of scope. This might be because they are trial environments or something like that. So don't use them or don't hand in submissions for those. And just make sure that the finding you found is not anywhere on, on any of those domains that are listed out of scope or it doesn't have to be a domain. It could also be like a binary or something like that that is out of scope. And last but not least, if you have found a finding, what I always do is I use the search functionality of my browser and I would just search for the finding that I've found. So in my case right now, it was a remote code execution. So I would put in remote and I don't get any results. So I expect that there is nothing listed about remote code executions in the Bug Bunny Pre. And that typically means to me that I'm good and I'm good to hand in the finding. You can obviously go once again over the list of findings that are not included or that are out of scope, like self XSS, USF, and so on over here. Just make sure that you're not handing anything in that is out of scope. All right, next up, place number three. The next step is to describe your findings step by step to make it super easy for the triage to get an idea how to exploit the vulnerability that you found. And this is super important for you because the faster the triaging team is in reproducing the finding, the faster you have the money in your account. And I just took any random page of Red Bull over here. And this is just an example. I'm not going to show a remote code execution, but let's say you found one on Axe Fighters. So the first thing I would do is I would copy that and say, all right, um, right over here, I would put down a hash mark. This is actually Markdown. If you don't know what Markdown is or need some advice, click on this button over here. And I would say exploitation steps. And then I would go ahead and say, first thing you do is browse to that URL. All right, so let's go back. And now our next step could be uh, click on the search icon, for example, and put down ASTF. Okay, so we do that. And over here, I would say, click on search icon in top right corner and fill in a STF. And if Markdown looks a little weird to you, you can just toggle the preview over here to make this a little easier to read. And yeah, this looks fine. So let's go back. All right. Next step could be maybe insert something into an out file. And I do have a little SQL query over here that I've prepared just 
as an example. So my next step could be number three, request or send query and I'll put down the thing that I've just copied in search bar and yada 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 you get the idea this is not a full exploit right now but you would just keep on going and fill out all the important steps that are needed for exploitation and yeah that looks pretty good then it's also super important for the triaging team to make sure what the impact is so i could say over here my impact is the vulnerability leads to remote code execution which allows to read the following data i don't know as this is an example i'm just putting down anything over here but you get the idea make sure to really make it clear what the vulnerability is what the impact is and what you can achieve with your finding and if you know you can also put down a recommended solution. This is optional, but maybe you are so smart that you already know how to fix it. And this is always really, really welcome. So I don't know, the fix could be, for example, make sure to put an HT access file into the web root folder or something like that. And this is it. Just make sure to really describe it step by step to make it super easy to follow. All right, next up, place number two. Another really good trick to make it even easier for the triaging team to quickly understand your finding is using images and videos. And you've seen before that I was saying, click on the search bar in the top right corner. This, I know, sounds pretty easy already, but what if this might be a little more complicated? There are really good tools out there to either take screenshots or take videos. I want to quickly go into two of them. For screenshots, I really like to use screenshot. So make sure to check this one out. And for videos, I really much love Zoom. Zoom has good video quality. You can just download the free version, open up a Zoom call with yourself and store the video on your computer. So let's say you've downloaded those tools and now you want to take a screenshot. I'm using Greenshot right now. I would, for example, take a screenshot of this entire space over here. Now I have Greenshot popping up. And then you have a lot of pretty tools over here on the left side. For example, an arrow that you can use to point on the icon or the search bar and let the triaging team know with that way that he has to click over there. And then you can just store it on your computer, go back to integrity, upload the picture and use it, for example, as an additional help under your point number two, where you say click on the search icon. And for videos, I just quickly want to mention that please do not record videos that are too long or do not record videos where you open up a text editor and explain what somebody's going to see in the video. If the bug or the vulnerability is really that complicated that you need a video, make at least sure that the video is pretty short and that it is understandable without having to read some text. <laughs> All right. And with that, I want to go to my final place, place number one. Here we go. All right. Final tip for today to to me, it's just super important to provide a POC or POC or proof of concept, whatever you want to call it. It's the same. And you might be saying right now, but I've already provided a POC over here. Yeah, well, you, you kind of described how to exploit it. But I think the best thing you can do is to write a little POC in, for example, your favorite scripting language in Python or in Ruby or whatever you prefer. And make it a one click shop for the triager and for the team that in the end gets the report to actually be able to reproduce the finding. And I'm just going to quickly show you what you can do. You could, for example, go over here and say, well, look, I do have a POC and I want to show you a little bit of Python code. So I will put down a little bit of markdown magic over here. 
and if I get this right, then I will put my park in here. And you might be wondering right now, what exactly is that? To be honest, I just stole any random Python code from a website right now. So this is not really a remote code execution park, but you get the idea. You put down your RCE park right over here. And let's quickly have another look at the preview. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. Park and a triage or the person who gets it in the end could just copy that and run it and see your exploit in action. All right, if you filled out all of that, you would obviously conclude your report by going down to the bottom, let's say yes over here, clicking next, and then you could review your finding and then click on submission. And this is it. And I wanna actually end this video with a couple of honorable mentions. So first of all, be friendly to the triaging team. Triages are like you and me, they're like regular people, and it doesn't help to curse around and be like, hey, when are you doing this? Be a little faster or something like that. Don't do that. Second is, don't ask for a specific time when this is getting triaged all the time. It doesn't help to go once, twice, or three times a day being like, hey, is this going to be triage today? Hey, have you had the look already? It doesn't help. They have it on the plates anyway, so just give them a little bit of time. And last but not least, if, if you find, let's say, 10 findings, which basically are the very same, but you might have found them on, on different pages and different views, just report them in the same report. If it's the same source of vulnerability, it doesn't make sense to create 10 findings. So those are two honorable mentions. Keep that in mind. Apart from that, I really want to thank you very much for watching this video. I also want to thank Integrity one more time for sponsoring this video. And with that, as always, thanks for watching. Subscribe in the top right corner and keep watching all my videos. I see you folks soon.